Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science. Ben is trapped in Morocco, I am ill, and we've lost all power. Starting off the news this week, the ESA's Euclid spacecraft has released its first operational images after being launched at the beginning of July this year. Euclid will take a unique look at one of the most pressing mysteries of our universe, dark matter and dark energy. Dark matter and dark energy are mysterious aspects of our universe that help pull galaxies together and push the boundaries of the cosmos even further. How little we know about dark energy and dark matter is one of many reasons why this mission is so exciting. The first images then were of the Horsehead Nebula, the Perseus Cluster, and three distant galaxies. One of the scientists working on the project has remarked that even these first images have shown us previously unseen detail in some of these already known parts of the universe. This could hint at the versatility of Euclid. Being able to find so much detail in distant systems could give us a unique look at the matter we already know about. A fantastic milestone in the exciting project worked on by both ESA and NASA. We look forward to seeing what secrets Euclid might reveal. The Worldwide Fund for Nature is working with fishermen from around the world in trialling a new fishing technology which could drastically reduce the amount of bycatch caught in fishing nets. Gill nets are the most widely used fishing gear in the world. They are huge walls of netting that hang in the water. The problem with them is that as well as catching the fish that the fishermen want, they also catch lots of other types of fish including sharks and marine mammals and turtles. This bycatch has to be plucked out of the net and is thrown back into the sea, often dead. To try to prevent this, scientists have been experimenting with different coloured lights attached to the net. It has already been shown that sea turtles are warded off by green lights, but the effects of light on other vulnerable species and the total amount of bycatch had never been tested. In a recent study, researchers attached green LED lights every 10 meters on gill nets along the Pacific coast of Baja California Sur, Mexico. They found that illuminated fishing nets reduced the average total bycatch by 63% including a 95% reduction in sharks, skates and rays, an 81% reduction in Humboldt squid and a 48% reduction in unwanted fish. Because there was less bycatch to get out of the net, it took fishers 57% less time to retrieve and untangle them, which is great for them as it improves the quality of their fish products, since they lack the proper space and capital to ice their catch at sea. It also means they're using less fuel and so reducing their carbon footprint. Scientists are going to carry out more experiments into this exciting technology, such as how light wavelength, intensity, flash rates and direction affect both target catch species and bycatch, and how it may vary in different ocean regions and fisheries worldwide. Up first in the paleontology news for this week is a very exciting study on an Australian Megaraptoran dinosaur. The Megaraptorans are an enigmatic grouping of medium to large body-sized theropods from the Cretaceous period, and for much more information on them, you can watch our video from a few months ago all about these dinosaurs. Anyway, this new study reports on a fragment from the roof of a skull comprising a frontal and fused piece of parietal, dating to the lower Cretaceous of Victoria, Australia. Although fragmentary, it's also the first piece of theropod skull found in Australia that doesn't come from the jaws, and it displays several very characteristic Megaraptoran features, enabling the paleontologists to identify it as a member of this grouping, as supported by two different kinds of phylogenetic analyses. Interestingly, it possesses some relatively basal features of Megaraptoran frontals, indicating that this came from a fairly basal or primitive Megaraptorid, and therefore providing some more support for the idea that Megaraptorids may have originated in Australia during the Cretaceous. So a fantastic dinosaur discovery there then, and some more much needed information on the Megaraptors. Also in the recent paleontology news, there's been a paper naming and describing two new species of Jurassic lampreys which fed on the flesh of prehistoric fish. These species, named Yanliaomyzon oxizer and Lanliaomyzon ingensdentes, were uncovered in mid to late Cretaceous age deposits in North China and have changed what we thought about how the lamprey lineage evolved. 
The lampreys are one of two groups of living jawless vertebrates, the others being the hagfish, and so working out that the evolutionary history of these animals has particular relevance to the evolution of vertebrates. Not only is Yanliao Maison oxizer the largest fossilized lamprey to ever be found, at 64 centimeters or 25 inches long, but these fossils preserve all the detailed mouth parts showing that these Jurassic creatures fed on the flesh of other marine organisms, like the modern pouched lamprey that lives in the southern hemisphere. Looking at the evolutionary relationships of the lineage, the paleontologists found that these new species are the closest fossil representatives to the modern lampreys, and also find that the distinctive three-stage life cycle of lampreys, starting as larvae called Amocoetes and then metamorphosing before the final adult stage, only evolved in the mid-Jurassic once enhanced feeding structures appeared and their body sizes increased. Additionally, they propose that the rise of fishes with thin scales in the early Jurassic may have been an important event for lampreys as they had access to a prey source that was more easily penetrated. The researchers also found that the ancestors of all modern lamprey groups appear to have appeared in the late Cretaceous in the southern hemisphere and not in the north as had been previously thought. So, many incredible new discoveries about lampreys thanks to these wonderful fossils, showing that the ancestors of the living animals started off with a flesh-eating diet instead of a blood-feeding one. That's it for this week's 7 Days of Science. Sorry about the strange voice, but we'll be back next week with even more science, so prepare yourselves for yet more science. <laughs>